Welcome to the UGC series of lectures in zoology. Today, we shall be continuing the studies of Platy helminthes, the phylum which contains different types of parasites, which belong to three classes, class Trematoda, class Cestoda, and the class Nematoda. So we have been continuing the studies of the cestoda, and we have taken up some cestodes, described them like tinea solium, tinea saginata, and uh, multiceps, multiceps, and then echinococcus granulosus. We see that these animals, platyhelminthes, what we call them, are flatworms, triploblastic in nature, and they are mostly parasitic in origin. Continuing with the studies of the cestoda, we take such parasites which live in the intestines of man and other animals. We shall be taking the, today the studies of Diphylobothrium latum, which is a long cestode about three to five meters in length and may go up to 10 meters even in its length, which lives in the intestines of the man with its head known as the scolex, then the neck region, then the immature proglottids and the mature proglottids. This cestode belongs to Pseudophyllidia. We have taken the studies of Cyclophyllidia, wherein we could find that there are four suckers in their scolex. Besides that, we may find a rostellum, which may be started with hooks in a single or a double row. Or sometimes the rostellum may be absent. But in pseudophyllids, what we find is that there is not a perfect scolex with the suckers and the rostellum, but instead we are having a head region which is having some depressions in the, on it. These are known as bothria. In, in some we may be having two bothria, or the depressions, or in some we are having uh, four known as the tetraphyllidia. So, for this uh, Diphylobothrium latum, which is a which is a long cestode, which lives in the intestines of uh, the man, it's a long cestode which has the head region now with the, the depressions and then the neck region and then the strapula. This strapula, what we call it, is uh, contains the immature proglottids, which are having the primordia of the reproductive organs then the mature proglottids, which are having both, uh, both the male as well as the female set of the reproductive organs. Thus, there is a hermaphroditic setup in each proglottid of, the, of this uh, animal. Then, after this, we are having the graved proglottids. There is a large number of mature proglottids. The mature proglottids which are contain large number of testes in the anterior region towards the later sites. And then we are having the vitellaria, we are having the ovaries, we are having the vas deferens connected to the testes. Uh, these vas efferentia are connected to the vas deferens, and this, this vas deferens is connected to the serous sac. So we are having accordingly the female reproductive organs comprising of the two testes, and then there is the vitaline glands, and then these are, there is an O-type, the uterus. This uterus is firstly the tubular and then develops into a large uterus comprising of many uh, hundreds of eggs. And it has been seen that in a, that a, a single worm can lay up to one million eggs per day. Gravid proglottids are larger and can contain large number of eggs. 
uh, a single sustode can uh, lay at least uh, at least uh, one million such types of eggs, which are passed out along with the feces uh, to the outside. Once they reach outside, they are, these feces are devoured by different organisms. If these are get in contact, if they are near the water, we see that cyclops usually take them, diaptomus and others, they take it, these are the crustaceans. They may devour these eggs. Of course, these eggs, when they reach the water, they, they form small, uh, small uh, ciliated structures known as the coracidium. This coracidium swims in the water, reaches the cyclops, enters, enters into the cyclops, and in the cyclops, they shut off the cilia and become prosarcoid. So this is the second stage. This second stage remains in the body of the cyclops or the diaptomus, and once this, uh, this, uh, this is taken by second host. So it has the primary host, as the, it has the definitive host. Then we have the intermediate host number one, which is the cyclops. Then we have the intermediate host number two, which is a, which is a fish. So this uh, cyclops is taken by the fish as a food, as it is food, and in the while reaching its intestines, the duodenum, it, it, uh, it passes from the intestinal wall into its body. It may reach its uh, different organs, get us uh, start in, the, in its muscles, or maybe liver or some other organ. Where it, uh, after this uh, coracidium, we see that it uh, forms the another structure no, pro, from prosarcoid, which is known as the pleurosarcoid. So we are having now third stage, that is the pleurosarcoid, from egg, coracidium, coracidium to prosarcoid, then the pleurosarcoid. Pleurosarcoid is, is a little larger in size, and uh, it, it, is, it develops, uh, the, it has, uh, like if we uh, show its life cycle, and we see that different stages are there, and this pleurosarcoid, which develops in the muscles of the fish, in the muscles of the fish, it, uh, it can remain for a longer while. Once the fish is taken raw or poorly cooked by the definitive host, which is the man, man once takes it, it gets uh, it uh, attached for this, uh, reaches this pleurosarcoid, reaches the intestines of the man, gets uh, the, this colex which is uh, invaginated, comes out, this works out, and then it gets attached by its bothria to the intestinal mucosa, and uh, then starts proliferating from its neck region, when, while uh, proliferating, it may develop into 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000 uh, proglottids in the intestines, Thus, it uh, becomes as long as three to four, uh, three to four meters, or sometimes may go even more. And it has been seen up to eight meters or ten meters. It can go in the intestines, thus covering whole of the intestines. During now, while it uh, becomes uh, proliferating, or then of starting the reproduction, which is internal in case of these um, cestors, mostly. Uh, in this case, they have to take the food, and this food is they get from the intestines of the man. So they, along with the digested food, they take a lot of the B, vitamin B complex. And what a man gets, macrocytic uh, anemia, because maturation, of the RBCs does not occur because of this absorption of more and more of this vitamin B complex by these worms. So in addition to loss of this, or sometimes a man feels a lot of appetite 
or sometimes even loss of appetite, and there, there will make, can be you know, vomiting given, or some diarrhea, and others are troubles, uh, stomach pain might be, this uh, intestinal pain might be there, and uh, then in addition to that, uh, one suffers from this macrostic anemia. And uh, this, is, uh, this has been reflecting a lot uh, worldwide, although it is absent from our country, India, but it is uh, mostly prevalent in Baltic states and in European countries, where it is very prevalent. And uh, thus, we see that this cestode, the longest cestode, uh, known as the diphylobathrium latum, is uh, situated in the intestines of the man. So man is its definitive host, while as there are two intermediate hosts where it develops from uh, egg to prosarcite, then to from egg first the coracidium in water which swims, enters the body of, the, of this uh, the crustacean, and then the crustacean, here in crustacean, it develops into a prosarcite, which is devoured. This crustacean is devoured by the fish, and in fish, it enters into the body, into its muscles, and develops into a pleurosarcite. This pleurosarcite remains in its muscles, in the muscles of the fish. And once man takes this fish along with the process, along with this pleurosarcite, this he paginates its head in its small intestines and attaches itself to the mucosal uh, membrane of the small intestines. Thus. Uh, harming the uh, mucosal membrane also by its attachment due to bathria, and also then start this, uh, eating up its food, digested, digested food, plus the vitamin B complex. Uh, because it has uh, the worm which has the cells, as the cells have the uh, tegument. This tegument is produced into microtikes. These microtikes fit in into the microvilli of the intestines. Thus, they go on stealing the food which is to be uh, absorbed by these microvilli, which goes directly into the liver of the man. So we can take another cestode, uh, which, uh, which is always, again a very dangerous, that is known as the multiceps multiceps. Multiceps multiceps is usually found in the canines, dog, wolf, and other canines, and it is, uh, it, it is just 10 to 20 centimeters in length, uh, while it remains in the intestines of these uh, canines. But once uh, it produces its eggs, these eggs are devoured, these are passed out uh, along with the feces of these canines uh, on the grass, and on the blades of the grass, these blades of grass when taken by our herbivores. Now, while reaching their intestines, it passes the, um, the hexaconth embryo by having the six hooks, uh, penetrates its way out through the tutorial wall, reaches the system circulation, and then ultimately it lodges in different organs, mainly the brain of this herbivore. So what we find that once it reaches the brain or the nervous system, it has a bad effect on its um, uh, host where this, uh, because it, once it reaches there, it develops uh, to a large cyst known as the sinurus cerebralis. This sinurus cerebralis is a, is a um, delicate cyst which, uh, which develops in the brain of these herbivores and, and bearing large number, hundreds of scolices inside. So it is very difficult to get it remedied by taking the antihelmintics or other medicines, so a surgery is must. And the surgery of this uh, is, is one has to go surgery of the brain and it may cost the life of the animal. While this have the diagnosis of such a parasite in the, um, in the brain of the uh, herbivores, we see sheep 
if the sheep which is bearing this in its cerebrum or other part of the brain, it hangs its head on one side or may uh, go and uh, sit straight away and strike the wall. Uh, it may lose its appetite, it cannot take. Sometimes it, uh, it may be blind by one eye. So it, it loses its appetite, it does not uh, take food, and ultimately emaciates through by emaciation, it may die ultimately. Uh, this is the resultant of this cyst known as the sinuous cerebralis when we find in the brain of sheep or any other herbivore. Uh, this, so it is larval stage is very dangerous, while in case of diphyllo bathroom, we see the adult stage is very dangerous to man, and the larval stage of this is very dangerous of um, this multicephus, multicephus, which is found in the canines, it is larval stage. Senurus cerebralis is very dangerous to our herbivores, like sheep, goat, and other herbivores. So uh, to get, uh, it is very difficult to get rid of such untainted and unless uh, we treat them properly and we don't allow uh, our sheep, our goat, our other herbivores to take such type of uh, grass, such type of food which is contaminated with the feces of dogs and other canines. With this, we come to the conclusion of today's topic on cestodes. Thank you very much. <laughs>